finally, ladies and gentlemen, I have a bit of good news for you today. That's right, you guessed it. England is about to drop virtually all anti-COVID restrictions. This is from lefty corporate news site CBS News, by the way. Yeah, so they're done with COVID. Finally, somebody has some sense. We're going to try and get back to normal, looks like. It says, London, most legal restrictions to prevent the spread of coronavirus in England will be dropped next week. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson told the British Parliament on Wednesday. And from Monday, face masks will no longer be mandatory anywhere in England. Sanity shall be restored over there across the pond. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully that will catch on uh, to the rest of the world. You know, Australia is probably going to lag behind because they're still locking up old ladies when they try to order a coffee at a cafe. But, you know, more power to them. That's how they want to do it down under. It says, our scientists believe it is likely that the Omicron wave has now peaked nationally. Awesome. Although, <laughs> what they don't talk about nearly as much is that this variant is more like the cold. Um, it hasn't really reported to be deadly at all. The restrictions being lifted on Monday in England were some of the least stringent imposed across Europe to counter the Omicron wave. They included a requirement for face masks to be worn in crowded indoor spaces, mandatory COVID-19 passes, which show vaccination status or recent negative tests to enter large venues, a guidance to work from home where possible. So that's what they were doing. They're dropping even that over there. In fact, the premier said his government hoped to lift the only remaining legal requirement for anyone who tests positive for COVID-19 to self-isolate for at least five days. So they're trying to even ax that over there. Um, even though this mandate was going to expire automatically in March, they want to get rid of that even sooner. Um, which is freaking awesome. I can't wait. There's not been a lot of chatter on this yet, though. I was really surprised. Like, I know that the uh, COVID culture is probably going to be screaming from the rooftops. No, you're slaughtering us all. Bring back the lockdowns. Bring back the measures. We love being locked up. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. I haven't seen any headlines of the screaming masses yet. I'm sure it's coming. But this is interesting because, you know, it's going to make the rest of the world look kind of silly when England is like, nah, we're done. Um, by the way, I wanted to point out something. Uh, down here at the bottom. I think it's down here at the bottom. It's becoming endemic is what I'm looking for. Um, basically, yeah, here it is. As COVID-19 becomes endemic in the UK, rather than an epidemic, Johnson said the rules would be replaced with guidance or advice. So that's what I feel like we should have been doing from the start instead of sabotaging the mental health of our children and creating this weird culture where everyone's uh, perpetually afraid of each other and... Um, and like ruining the economy and so on and so forth. I think that from the very beginning, we should have just had guidance and advice instead of rules. So this is a great step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned, but what do I know? But I wanted to highlight this uh, word, this word endemic. Uh, in this report, it says, as COVID-19 becomes endemic in the UK rather than an epidemic, um, just to go over what an endemic is real quick of a disease or condition regularly found among particular people in a certain or in a certain area regularly found. Okay. Down here, um, the synonyms are 
widespread, prevailing, frequent, usual, common. Um, we're a little slow on the uptake here. COVID has been an endemic for a while, meaning it, it was widespread. We shut down travel in the early stages of the pandemic, um, but it still got here. It still reached every corner of the globe in record time. It was widespread. It was prevailing. It was frequent. It was usual. It was common. Uh, but we weren't treating it like that. We were still kind of fooling ourselves into thinking that uh, with vaccination, we could we could stop this. We could end it. People today, like when you're scrolling through social media or browsing headlines, they're still convinced that together we can do this. We can stop the pandemic. Just get a vaccine. Wrong. It was widespread within, oh God, I want to say... I want to say that by like April, May, it was already all around the world. It was in the population. You weren't going to vaccinate your way out of it. And the vaccines that we got, um, as we know, have breakthrough cases. They don't stop transmission. Uh, so never under any circumstance were we going to stop this uh this disease from spreading with vaccination so it's crazy to me that we're only just now admitting to ourselves that covid is a endemic and no longer a pandemic um i hope this trend continues and that we all start to pick up the pieces of our lives and learn to deal with the fact that we have the virus instead of freaking out and making things far worse for everyone by our hyper reaction to the disease. Um, the other story that I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk a little bit about Pfizer. So did you know that, uh, did you know that uh, Pfizer settled a massive settlement, $2.3 billion settlement? Uh, it was a federal fine. Like, uh, it was a felony. I'm sorry. They were, they were facing a felony. I want to kind of go over some of this with you. I love to go to establishment media and their fact checks because these are supposed to be the most airtight review of information possible because it's a fact check from the establishment media, right? And if that's the case, everything that they say on these fact check um, columns must be super accurate and super true by their own admission, correct? So what I do is I find these fact checks that are trying to downplay or discredit wild accusations surrounding different things. And while they will discredit the wild accusations, what they admit is true is way more shocking than <laughs> what they're trying to discredit. In case in point, this... Uh, this Pfizer scandal uh, is, whew, they did a fact check on it. Let's go to the top and see exactly what they're trying to, to, to resolve here. Fact check. Resolved lawsuits against Pfizer, alleged marketing fraud, data manipulation. All right, let's get into it. The claim. Pfizer was sued for $2.3 billion for bribing doctors and suppressing adverse trial results. A viral social media post suggests that Americans shouldn't trust Pfizer. Ooh, we must trust Pfizer. How dare you? Um, all right. This post appears to be referencing the $2.3 billion settlement by Pfizer in 2009. By the way, that's the second largest medical settlement 
uh, pharma settlement in history. The second largest. The third, guess, guess who has the third? Johnson & Johnson. I digress. Um, but it's misleading about the scope of the allegations relating to the settlement. Hmm. There, it's a misleading thing to say that maybe Pfizer doesn't deserve our trust. Let's see. <sighs> the post appears to reference a settlement involving Pfizer in which the company pleaded guilty to a federal criminal charge relating to the marketing of four drugs. The company agreed to pay $2.3 billion as part of the settlement. Ooh, so a subsidiary, subsidiary of Pfizer agreed to plead guilty to a felony violation of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act for misbranding the painkiller Bextra with the intent to defraud or mislead. According to the Department of Justice, this is not fringe conspiracy stuff here, people. I didn't make this up. Under the act, the company must specify the uses of its product in the FDA's new drug application and not market a product in other ways after that point. The Department of Justice wrote in a press release that Pfizer promoted the sale of Bextra for several uses and dosages that the FDA specifically de declined to approve due to, this is the big one, Safety concerns. <whistles> so, apparently they just didn't give a fuck. The company paid a criminal fine of one point whatever billion. Pfizer also forfeited an additional 105 million. Bextra was withdrawn from the market in 2005. <whistles> hmm. Pfizer paid... One billion to resolve allegations of civil wrongdoing. Ooh. Uh, illegally promoted Bextra and three other drugs the antipsychotic Geodon, the antibiotic Zyvox, and the anti epileptic drug Lyrica. Mm. The company also resolved allegations that it paid kickbacks. An illegal payment in exchange for preferential treatment or compensation to healthcare providers to encourage them to prescribe the drugs. So they made a settlement uh, over allegations that they were paying healthcare providers to encourage them to prescribe their drugs that weren't approved. <laughs> that were being mislabeled, uh, prescribed to do things that they weren't intended to do. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, let's go down to the bottom and just see the summary here. Um, they're trying to now uh, disassociate these settlements and these allegations, and these charges, and these fines, and these felonies. We're trying to disassociate all that with the COVID vaccines. Our rating, partly false. I love fact checkers. I love fact checkers. You notice that it's not partly true. No, we can't put partly true up there because, uh, by the way, we're funded by Pfizer. Here, let me show you. Is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360. Brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Early start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press. Data download. Brought to you by 
Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. All right, so, hmm, yeah, of course, uh, instead of this fact check reading our rating partly true, obviously they'd rather word it partly false because, as I just showed you, they're on Pfizer's payroll. This is not disputable. This is not conspiracy. This is fact, everything that I'm talking to you right now about. Our rating. Partly false. We rate that claim that Pfizer was sued for $2.3 billion for bribing doctors and suppressing adverse trial results. Partly false. Since this claim jumbles and misstates elements of two different cases, Pfizer has settled various lawsuits that involve allegations of kickbacks, fraudulent marketing, and data manipulation. The $2.3 billion was the total amount of the settlement involving Pfizer, but not in a case related to suppressing adverse events. That allegation came in an earlier case that began before Pfizer acquired the company involved. So basically, everything in this post is true. They are just um, taking issue with the... Um, the the association with the settlements and some claim that uh, they were suppressing adverse events, which I don't care about that. What I care about is the fact that all of this about their allegations and their settlements and their frauds and their false marketing, their kickbacks, their bribing, all of that is actually true. Um, <laughs> which, oh, I gotta, I gotta wrap this up for you down here at the bottom. It says something really, really funny. <laughs> it says, uh, additionally, the caption of the post implies that because of the prior lawsuits, Pfizer's coronavirus vaccines may not be safe, which is false. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We're just going to take your word for it. Um, we're going to take your word for it. You're going to take, we're going to take the media in which Pfizer has bought and paid for. We're going to take their word for it. Um, we're going to trust Pfizer's clinical trials that they didn't start until mm, like May of 2020 for the new coronavirus vaccine. We're going to trust everything that they have to say about its safety and effectiveness. We're going to trust all of that. Why? Because, well, as it says here, it's false to say anything else about them or the vaccine. Um, how do we know it's false? Because they say so, obviously. What are you, some kind of a conspiracy theorist? What do you live under a rock? What are you not? Do you not believe in science, friends? It says right here, those allegations are false. We can definitely trust. We can definitely trust the serum. We can trust the media. We can trust Pfizer. We can trust Fauci. We can trust Biden. We can trust the government. We can trust Big Pharma. Because, well, they say so. Yeah. And uh, anyone who doesn't agree, like the thousands of doctors who have been stifled, they've been censored, they've been ostracized from public debate, uh, we, we can get rid of all those voices who have concerns. We can, uh, we can limit what can be said surrounding COVID-19 to one narrative. Um, I've not seen the stifling of scientific debate like this 
I mean, it, this is like on a level of, akin to Galileo. Um, don't talk falsely. Don't don't talk disparagingly or questioning. You don't you know don't have any skepticism whatsoever over the Pfizer gospel, friends, because well. You're in dangerous territory there. You'll get labeled an anti-vaxxer, a conspiracy theorist, immediately. Test it out with your friends or social media. See what happens. It's happened to me a million times. People think I'm some kind of a fringe nut job for simply presenting to you fact checks and, uh, and data, information, quotes from Fauci, you know, when he admitted that COVID numbers are overcounted based on the fact that we test everybody who comes into the hospital for COVID, even if they didn't go in there sick. You know, even if they go in there with like a broken leg, he admits, oh, we test them for COVID. And uh, if it comes back positive, we count those as COVID hospitalizations. He admitted it. Look at my last video, if you don't believe me. I'm not making this up. Um, so like, you know, I'm not telling people not to get the vaccine. You know, if we can trust the data, there is data saying that it can, um, I guess, reduce severity of symptoms. If again, if you have faith in these uh, establishment media sources and that's up to you but uh yeah i'm not i'm not discouraging anyone from making their own decisions i'm actually encouraging people to make their own informed decisions which is not allowed anymore by the way i mean uh <laughs> biden was trying very hard to make it so that we didn't have control we we couldn't make the decision for ourselves. It was going to be forced upon us. I'm glad the Supreme Court swatted that down, which if you didn't know, that happened earlier this week. Um, because even the Supreme Court is like, I don't think OSHA and this administration should have the power to force you to get this brand new experimental vaccine under the threat of losing your job. Think the i mean because think about what that would have done to the economy i mean there are so many people who have made up their mind to either wait for more data or just not take it entirely and i don't think a, a lot of those people i don't think if they were forced to make that decision or lose their job a lot of them just wouldn't do it and would be forced to be fired and uh you think we're having supply problems now uh, I can only imagine what would have happened if we would have federally mandated the the vaccine. Uh, the workforce would have taken such a huge hit, worse than we're already seeing. And uh, that could have been the collapse of our society. That could have been the last straw that toppled everything. We're already we're already teetering so bad, but um. Yeah, I wanted to point out too. You know, we clinical trials takes like seven to ten years for a reason for a new drug or vaccine. Um, phase four of a clinical trial looks for long term effects, and you'll see a lot of people trying to completely mock and discredit the idea that a new drug could have long-term effects, which is insane. The whole reason for phase four of a clinical trial is to take several years of keeping an eye on people who've been taking this new drug to see if any weird stuff pops up. Um, <laughs> so you had like the you had like the initial couple of years of human trials for a vaccine or a drug. And then once it was approved by the FDA and and produced and sold to the public, uh, 
basically we made the general public of the world phase four of our clinical trials for the COVID vaccines because there was an additional step there that we did not take the time to do. And that's the phase four, looking over a long period of time for anything that might pop up. Um, and while I got you here, there's just one last thing that I want to say that I haven't said on my channel yet. And that is, well, I think I'll save it for another video. I'll save it for another video. This is a good place to stop. All right, guys, sound off in the comments if you think uh, that some of this is crazy. We got good news about got yeah, good news about the about England going to squash the covid measures that's good i think that uh you know they have quite a bit of influence on the world scene and i think all other countries are now going to feel pretty foolish for being hypochondriacs and sabotaging their economy and the happiness and mental health of their citizens while england is over there like we're done let's move on you know yeah sickness is bad yeah you know old people are going to get sick and die but to be honest that's not new that's something that we've been dealing with for a long time uh look at how deadly tb is and, and other infectious diseases that we've had the flu so on etc um, you know, I wish that I had pulled up, if you look, uh, if you Google search the population growth rate over the past, uh, couple of years, you'll notice that during the pandemic, it's like nothing happened, like nothing unusual happened. You go down the years, like, okay, so the population growth has been on decline for a long time now, or like 10, 15 years or something. But it's been, it's been pretty consistent, uh, the population growth rate declining by something like 0.2%, um, pretty consistently over like the past three, four, five years, well, about five years or something. Um, but you'll notice that uh, during the pandemic, I think it was from 2020 to July 2021, uh, you'll notice that the population grew by something like 81 million people, which is exactly on track with the last five years. So it does beg the question, if all these media sources and, and all these experts and professionals are, they have good information and good data on COVID and hospitalization and death and all that, how is it that the population grew exactly as expected during the pandemic before we had the vaccine, mind you? We had no treatment, we had no vaccine, and, uh, you know, literally the worst pandemic ever population grew exactly as, as, as normal. Uh, I don't know. So like as bad as COVID is, some of you, maybe you've lost us, uh, maybe you've lost some loved ones, you know, um, and that sucks. <laughs> But uh, I lost two loved ones over the course of the pandemic, and it was not related to the pandemic at all. It was not related to COVID-19. So why did I bring it up? Because people tend to die. You know, that's not new. Um, I feel like we're hyper-focused on COVID. Like if someone, if, if like your elderly relative goes into the hospital and they 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 end up dying from covid uh comorbidities are always present meaning 
COVID is not the sole reason why they died. Um, they have things like pneumonia and like heart problems. It could be weakened immune system. Maybe they're, you know, recently been battling cancer or, you know, just like a million different things um, are also to blame. And I only say that because I think that we are looking to blame COVID for all the sickness and death in the world right now. And we've never done that before. And uh, I think we got to stop doing that. Case in point, when you, okay, say you saw off your leg accidentally, an accident, right? At work or something. Oh God. So you rush to the hospital. They rush you to the hospital. How crazy would it be if while you're bleeding out, they test you for the flu? It comes back positive. And when you die, they counted you as a flu death, a flu hospitalization and a flu death. How insane would that be? How, how high would flu cases, hospitalizations, and death be if we did that? It would be astronomical. And uh, we've we've never done that before. Um, Fauci himself said that because of this, we've overcounted COVID cases because that's what we're doing. Um, and you know we're never going to return to normal until we can stop blaming COVID for all sickness and death because it's absurd. Do you think that the flu went away? Uh, you think you think bronchitis, pneumonia, RSV? You think all of these things just went away when COVID came? No, no. Um, people are routinely getting sick, especially during the cold months. And uh, you know, I remember I used to get the flu pretty bad a couple times. I got the flu really bad, and guess what? I lost taste and smell. I I remember distinctly having the flu not even that long ago. Um, in fact, uh, I was living in Texas at the time with my ex. And we both got the flu and we both lost taste and smell and it was severe and it was intense. Uh, we had all the COVID symptoms years ago, like before the pandemic. Um, but we didn't freak out. We didn't go on social media, freak everyone else out because people get sick. They have flu symptoms. They have loss of taste and smell. Uh, this is not new. The virus, sure, it's new. It's a new strain. And to some degree, okay, well, we didn't know. Okay, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. Sure, all right. So maybe there's room for extra caution. But we have sabotaged society over this thing um up and down the chain and and we've also in, introduced authoritarianism and tyranny over this thing um and as it turns out i think it's time that we just say okay well we took precautions we were super careful but now we know what this thing is now now we know that the latest strain isn't even isn't even really deadly it's more like the common cold omicron if you look up uh everyone even the corporate mainstream pfizer bought news sources will tell you that it's less severe than delta we know what this thing is now we know what it's capable of we know how dangerous it is if you want to put it as dangerous um we got to be like England, start using some common sense, get our lives back, get our freedoms back, and maybe our children won't be 
socially stunted by the uh, COVID culture. Not seeing their parents or their friends smile because of masks covering their face, so on, etc. All right, guys. Wow, I went on a real tangent there. Hope you enjoyed it. Faithful Slave, I'm out.